okay that's yeah. that's an important aspect that we uh, 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 recollect every time uh, second yeah. thing is the authenticity when i uh, speak about authenticity uh, it's all about emotions authenticity is not about what you are uh, seen physically uh, it's about what you are from inside okay mm -hmm. uh, so one of the recent uh, of course four or five years back you have gone through that ad of google jahan pe jazeera ke bare mein baat kar rahe the okay mm -hmm. it's a whole universal problem of partition of two countries but emotionally they tried connecting two nations and shown a simple they said it this is how simple an equation between two nations can look and how google can actually contribute okay and i hardly see anyone uh, without wiping their tears at the end of the ad it connects so emotionally so authenticity is something it is not physical which is actually touches your core okay so your value system that is that is what you have to uh, ensure that it reflects now coming to the corporate world after these ads how how do we connect this authenticity i take two stakeholders one is an employee internal and another is a service provider okay okay uh, it, talent it so happens that we have a lot of sources of uh, picking up the uh, talent uh, in terms of recruiting people So at that point of time, there was uh, this uh, uh, one of our recruiting partners who has come to us uh, after uh, five months. Okay, uh, while our agreement says beyond three months, uh, whatever CVs that you share with us is our uh, uh, kitty, and you will be told that this is this we have missed it, and uh, probably if you can check it out and give the credit to us for uh, bringing the talent. <laughs> okay. Uh, at that point of time, my team always has an op uh, option to. tell them that the 90 days is gone and you have not approached us okay mm -hmm. that is one thing or take an effort to actually dig out when this actually happened bring out the story all together and give him the credit kind of a thing okay so what we we we, we accepted is uh, we have gone with the relationship beyond the papers or the agreement that was there so that was i was if you can really connect i was speaking about credibility in the first instance mm -hmm. engagement in the second instance with the values imbibed okay so we all say that these these agencies or the recruiting uh, efforts that are being put by our partners there are partners in progress so here credibility runs a lot and uh, we have acknowledged them with their right rate and the second example is uh, we have seen a lot of uh, social media mashups that are happening in terms of the offers extended by multiple organizations okay mm -hmm. okay so it ultimately the guy lands up uh, into a fake job by paying so and so amount into bank accounts so we have come across so many instances and it is a very recent instance that we also are no exception in spite of being a big brand that i come from we are no ex uh, ex exception and one of the guys clearly told that uh, we are all fraudsters okay mm -hmm. he has laid an entire blame on the uh, the recruitment team as well as couple of my delivery team members saying that you're all fraudsters so at that point of time submitting submitting to the individual is quite important in front of the talent you have to submit if you if you have to be authentic you have to make him experience that authenticity in your speech and in your submission so at that point of time we requested him um, as a, as a team we called him up okay and uh, requested him to give us 3 minutes of time may help help him understand what is our entire hierarchy how do we operate like you are saying remote locations and offices at mm -hmm. some place how the coordination happens and finally that guy is actually uh, joining us on 26th okay. this guy who who avoided almost four to five members has submitted himself to the authentic submission that we have made in okay. terms of how the whole process happens so people are looking at the first one is about values that you hold towards your partner the second is about how do you treat the others in terms of putting across in terms of the chat in the midst of the challenges that you have from the market so these are the two small stories that i can bring to you that okay. speaks about authenticity and submission finally okay. before closing and hang out to bavesh for the next question you can always attract or grab the attention of the people with a poster Mm. i'm not sure how many of you are uh, mm, uh, born in the 70s and 80s but there was a famous poster by this mahesh bhat's movie jahan pe ek ladki aur ladka jacket ke piche chupe hain okay mm. and the poster was quite famous the movie mm. has a second part also these days it's ashiki subsequently okay. the movie got released uh, and and it was a huge hit now mm. whenever we we guys meet okay whether in a corporate or at a school level or at a college level people remember their love stories how they helped each other in uh, teaming up 
okay and how they bang the college or how they probably went out as a team to uh, watch that movie and how they enjoyed so stories with all these value propositions when i say value proposition life uh, life value proposition mm -hmm. that gives an emotional resonance to the employee value proposition is what we have to look forward that's all okay point. okay very very interesting examples uh, brought in by uh, shankar and uh, so i will i will move on the next one so i'll start with the uh, like uh, from bhavesh's thoughts and then move to shankar like what are the some of the innovative ways uh, where you have leveraged social media or you have seen uh, social media being leveraged for employer branding and uh, storytelling so employer branding storytelling is uh, one of the most popular things as you have seen that right? how did you see look at uh, look into that uh, as a perspective from the social media part so again i mean uh... With 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 pandemic setting, and I think what has happened is all of us have become very very digitally savvy, right? Okay. And, and that's when social media platforms uh, have have taken center stage. Brand heads, for example, have started focusing on on how should we be leveraging social media platforms in an optimal way? Because every CEO obviously is very very keen on looking at the ROI. Does it make sense? Does it resonate uh, with the talent segment that we are trying to attract, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. so the things that i i have done in my past and and things that a lot of organizations also do are uh, as under so i mean the first would be virtual tour campus right mm -hmm. uh in the pandemic in the last 3 years i mean some of us who have changed jobs have joined organizations without even seeing the organization that we're going to work for and and that mm -hmm. has kind of changed the mindset completely as indians we like to uh, visit the office meet our manager accept the offer in person and so on and so forth pandemic mm -hmm. has changed all of that so So to be able to get some of that uh, feeling back, I think what's very very critical and important is is maybe giving virtual campus tours to your prospective candidates who you are trying to uh, demonstrate in terms of how your culture is like, uh, mm -hmm. what is it that the person can get once he or she comes into your organization, and so on and so forth. Okay. Okay. Uh, what's also important is is to leverage employee stories on corporate handles, right? There are lots of very mature organizations who have started doing this very very significantly. that mm -hmm. i i think the the brand now uh, takes a, a lot of impact when it when it's spoken by let's say not a a known face but an employee of the organization themselves right so so how do you curate employee stories of talking about let's say if i am somebody who's spent 10 years and i've grown in the ranks those stories resonate more with the uh, with the external talent market so how do you leverage employee stories becomes very critical three mm -hmm. uh, I, i think uh, shankar did touch upon uh, a lot of nice anecdotes of of how the effective use of hashtags of taglines of images of posters that kind of leave a very very lasting impression so so as a as a social media manager or as a talent leader it's mm -hmm. very very critical for us to also try and understand our target audience create a, a story which kind of resonates with them to a large extent fourth mm -hmm. uh, and and last uh, in my opinion i think there are a lot of targeted campaigns that we also do right so, so sticking on to that campaign that campaign could be either a return to work campaign or maybe organizations talking about promoting diversity promoting corporate social responsibility so mm -hmm. how do you create the whole story plan package it time it and continuously follow up throughout uh, the social media becomes critical for mm -hmm. you to to leave that sense of belongingness with everybody that you're trying to attract okay okay Okay, uh, Shankar, your thoughts on this? How will you, how how you think like leveraging social media in these times can help in employer branding and storytelling? Yeah, uh, I'll I'll take the picture of um, the other side of what Bhavesh has explained to us. Okay. Uh, so every organization um, has a set of uh, uh, it, it has a soul on which it actually works and the objective with which it has come into existence, right? Hmm. so uh, it is very ironical to think about certain aspects say for example let us take the example of an hospital if it, if it has to promote itself what what should it promote hmm. they actually live on the money that the patients pay right hmm. uh, but but unfortunately they they can't uh, wish everyone to to get hospitalized yeah. right and insurance uh, there is nothing that insurance speaks about life it is actually we all know what insurance speaks about at least the life insurance it hmm. speaks about life but life after death hmm. so mere hisab se kal insurance agent ek hi banda hai jo apne sina thaan kar koi aurat ke paas ja ke sent out to the audience to the target audience or the or the segment that you are trying to look at 
Mm-hmm. So that's that's the reason hospitals always say we wish you don't need us. Okay, mm-hmm. but at the same time they give an ad of a man walking after a knee replacement within 24 hours. Okay, mm-hmm. they sell it. You have to sell it, but you have to make the people experience the emotion of it. On one side, um, I, I don't want to make a business out of your uh, life, but at the same time, remember, hey, I am there for your support. That is one thing. Second thing is, I, d- during my uh, the teaser, I told about how Taj, wow, uh, Ustad Ali Khan and Taj are related to uh, Tata T is related to each other. Okay. Hmm. That story is not about chai. Chai is just a passing reference, but it is actually about the moments that are shared, okay, and the experience that you have undergone. And by and large, uh, the social media has to be used to communicate your moral governance rather than the corporate governance. Best example can be uh, Mahindra coming in and apologizing on a platform when something odd happened with one of his junior team members of the HR, um, asking some of the uh, senior employees moving out of the organization, not handled in a proper way. Okay. Okay. Why? Why? Why an organization's key member has to come on to the social media and extend apologies and say that I am going to take care and let this be a passing cloud. So hmm. this is where okay people started looking at not just the corporate governance. What is there in the balance sheet? Nahi dekh rahe ho. They are looking at your moral governance. So one of the classic example is one of the CEOs who is running the organization has told, I comprise of a team. that has sacrificed their 50% of the salary to ensure the rest of the team members stay with the organization during the covid times hmm. okay there are there are many stories that we can infer from from behind either the organization has slashed the salaries this is a story that everyone can understand but if you really see i have a people i have people who are with me in tough times and who are ready to sacrifice for others that means when you are with me we will grow together and when you are when you need a support we all will come together okay, okay. so th- people are looking at more of a moral governance rather than the corporate governance or are looking at what is the uh, share price that is happening in the trade markets kind of a thing so mm-hmm. it is you need to sell your moral governance to the people on the social media and be right in choosing the words be right in choosing the words the words that you use have to extend that feel of working in the organization okay have to extend that the feel please underline the word feel feel is important they have to experience that feel of, mm-hmm. of working with organization that's what they should leverage upon okay so uh, like moving on shankar for the next one um, very similar question to the last one but i need a uh, so can you share with me your real life case where is Uh, story really significantly uh, improved an employer brand see uh, while uh, i can't take the names of the corporates but i i can okay. say some of the models to market but still mm-hmm. people have become um, loyal customers to such products and and okay. with the products you can relate with the organizations also okay mm-hmm. uh, it is a cosmetics company Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, which always says that we use the natural products and we don't use chemicals and other things. Mm-hmm. That's the first co- organization that has got into MLM, multi-level marketing. You all probably by now people would have understood what is the brand. And second thing is also making you uh, slimmer. Okay, there is one powder which is which has been there since last twenty years. Okay. Mm-hmm. we have never seen the organizer speaks about the personality of women how they hold secrets to themselves and the, how they project themselves okay how how uh, um, uh, ambitious they can in terms of executing the things kind of a thing okay. mm-hmm. so that's how it is so the strategy has to be let your value be propagated through the employees not with anyone anything else mm-hmm. great great sagar very very insightful stories and very interesting ones uh, to say at least uh, i'll move on to bhavesh with the same question uh, any any case which comes in your mind where uh, storytelling significantly improved the brand and employer brand so sure, so so uh, see i've always been very very fascinated with uh, intel and and okay. from the time i started working i mean i i uh, and and they have not changed it, right intel inside is that small logo unless you are a mac user every time you touch and feel a laptop you see that logo on your uh, touch pad right and that gives you a sense of knowing and believing that the product that you're buying is is good so i think it's worked wonders for them mm-hmm. and, and if you have recently followed intel now they have uh, partnered with toshiba and the new storyline says beauty inside so i think mm-hmm. that's one example that i feel uh, of, of a powerful 
story telling story messaging and all that mm-hmm. uh, shankar did touch upon some wonderful campaigns and 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 if you look at advertisements right there are there are some lovely advertisements and in fact dag achhe was one advertisement that uh, shankar spoke about which is beautifully curated and something that uh, a lot of us can learn from in in terms of building that curiosity starting with a question mark then why is dag achhe i mean the moment you start talking about it you'll how is it resonating with the product that you're trying to sell because right. it's absolutely uh different to what you want to do right mm. likewise i think uh, one more recent ad and i'm sure some of you have seen this is this piramal finance ad which keeps talking about uh hum kagaz nahi niya dekhte hain which also kind of is very very compelling not because it's it's a it's a emotional tagline also because it's it's the fact that it understood the audience that it's trying to reach the the microfinance segment of it and and that's what they're targeting now let me uh, go back into some of my past examples that i wanted to share of how storytelling has changed uh, one my own joining into that organization two after joining into that organization how could i uh, perhaps build some of the story to 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 it was have you seen my resume i work for g ibm capgemini how can you even call me to to work for a janalakshmi financial services so so the intent also gives away saying you know what now you're trying to reach an audience who perhaps is not interested in working for a non branded organization because he or she is work for branded mm-hmm. organization mm-hmm. uh kudos to the consultant she kept on she kept on saying that you know what i only want 2 minutes with you to give you the mission vision of the organization and then you take a call i mean looking at the confidence obviously i said okay let me hear out from you she gave me a pitch for the next 60 seconds that i could never forget in my life she gave okay. me a pitch talking about how important is it for us to start looking at life beyond compensation life beyond uh, what you can do for yourself when will you start looking at what can you do for the country and so on so forth the very next day i had a setup with uh, the the board members whole mm-hmm. behold day 2 i am coming back with an offer letter of the organization that Great. was entry into jana janlakshmi financial services back then now i was uh, also required to head campus uh, for that particular team uh, now the challenge that i had was uh, the board wanted to hire management students from all the premier institutes now while i got sold because i am an old school that emotional tagging of being patriotic doing something for the poor and downtrodden with my heart with mm. the thing tug the heart of let's say a millennial maybe no so my job became more difficult because now as i said i was asked to hire 700 b schoolers from iims to try and see how can you get them so, so that again uh, was a was a very very massive exercise that we laid out in plain simple our strategy was to keep it very simple we said if you're looking for a fancy office uh with with an ac on so on so forth please join the other organizations having said that if there is something that you want to do for the country if there is something that you want to learn from the grassroots going to the ground level uh, grow bottom up and grow with the organization then you join jana hmm. as a result of that 90% of the candidates backed out but the 10% who joined us were people who actually stayed with us for long and did make so many wonders with the kind of projects that they run for us so i think it's very very important for for all of us to understand that there is no point uh, beating around the bush important is understand the organization understand the purpose lay out a story and be an ambassador of the story yourself great great so um, uh, great um, insights like uh, from consumer brands to technology to uh, kind of storytelling in in uh, kind of sourcing and i i would like to move on to the next question which is very very similar roots as the last question i did so what do you think uh, so i will start with bhavesh first so bhavesh what do you think in what ways can stories influence uh, talent attraction uh, as you told one story yes and uh, and retention in an organization like uh, storytelling how can it influence attraction and retention in multiple ways i mean while while we are constantly evolving and we are keeping in pace with the ai at the helm of things i have also spoken about this that we continue to be human right we like to meet we like to feel we like to see for ourselves before we Take the plunge, and that plunge could be in an organization or outside of the organization, right? So this is where a, a compelling storyline kind of makes uh, an absolute must. And as far as data points are concerned, I think there are lots of researches which are being done uh, as far as what are some of the numbers. So some of the researches that I had picked up from from various uh, organizations was, for example, nine out of ten candidates 
who would apply for a job hmm. uh, only and only if the employer brand is keeping it maintained in a fashion and, and those can be picked up from let's say a glass door or a gpdw surveys and what not right hmm. right 78% of the candidates uh, say that what matters to them the maximum at the time of choosing whether to join the organization or maybe renege the offer is the overall experience that they would have got from the time they were approached till the time they actually end up accepting the offer now as as recruiters we we keep missing this aspect to a large extent what we do in our day to day world and that's that's something that we need to all work towards is never ever forget the 99 candidates that you are not hiring because they are actually the ones who are the more important candidates because they'll become your pool they'll become your messengers and it's very very important to close loop with candidates who are not selected also I and mean, while yes in our in our rigmorale of closing things faster we only know the people who get shortlisted the remaining ones who are not shortlisted are not even responded to hmm. uh, and and so on and so forth so that becomes very critical for us so, so i think uh, as i said i mean there are there are several ways and means of how the organizations can retain talent and also mm-hmm. attract talent in, in ways and means that is known best for them okay uh, shankar your thoughts on this um, uh, stories in influencing talent attraction and retention so um, i'll refer uh, and reiterate about that uh, question uh, to the audience saying that how is uh, what alibaba has got to do with the world cinema okay uh, and how uh, uh, alibaba has contributed to the technology okay mm-hmm. so uh, say recruitment or talent acquisition or the corporate organizations it it is no new story right it has been mm-hmm. beaten to death n mm-hmm. number of times like in the love, love stories in the movie a guy comes mm-hmm. sees a girl falls falls mm-hmm. in a love story happens you take up, take up marketing a uh, seller meets a buyer a love story happens and a sale happens mm-hmm. okay. so similarly what you really see why alibaba is retold in, in multiple languages across the world the latest being some 15 years back with salman khan's brother arbaz khan doing alibaba chalis chore okay mm. so probably it has been it has been made some 40 to 50 times it, it, it is a power of recollection and reconnecting okay mm. and at the same time it's it's only about how do you present itself if if i am given opportunity to uh, do it again i would tell it as a story of the first the, the, the story uh, uh, duniya ka sabse pehla password ka story hai wo mm. khul ja sim sim the yes. same alibaba right but it is the first password that the entire world knew hmm. okay and we are speaking about security it that the, the story is there the entire it story or the technology story the security that we are speaking about can be connected with alibaba to an extent okay mm-hmm. the power to recollect okay because these stories as i said breathe personality they remain in the subconscious mind okay are we able to create experiences that remain in the subconscious mind is hmm. what अगर नींद में भी उठा के आपको अगर पूछते हैं कि अरे इसमें जॉइन हो जाओगे हाँ ठीक है आर वी इन आर वी आर वी एबल टू डू समथिंग इन 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 सच अ फैशन ओके दैट दैट इज दैट इज वन थिंग दैट वी हैव टू रियली लुक इन टू ओके द सेकंड थिंग इज द रूट्स ऑफ क्रिएटिंग दिस कैन ऑफ थिंग्स हैज टू स्टार्ट फ्रॉम इंस्टीट्यूशन ऑल्सो okay even even there is a role uh, when we are speaking about corporate we also look forward to the faculty or the institutional members to contribute to this thought process okay, okay. and and i always keep sharing this on various platforms i i, I find faculty who are interested to understand this also students okay. also it is all about uh, careers corporate employment is all about a conversation between a ca- career opportunity and a career aspirant right these yeah. are the only two characters career aspirant and career opportunity so uh, if you put it in a very settled way uh, there is always uh, if, uh, i i just uh, i hope uh, you will bear with my bizarre voice for a couple of uh, moments uh, it's a, it's a, uh, song by uh, music given by ar rehman hmm. okay bol iske aise tu hi re tu hi re तेरे बिना मैं कैसे जियो आ जा रे आ जा रे यू ही तड़पाना तू मुझको ओके एनी वन हुआ द मूवी विल टेल इट अरविंद स्वामी एंड मनीषा कोईराला बट इन प्लेस ऑफ अरविंद स्वामी एंड मनीषा कोईराला पुट करियर एस्पिरेंट एंड करियर अपॉर्चुनिटी नो करियर एस्पिरेंट इज टेलिंग टू द अपॉर्चुनिटी 
तू ही रे तू ही रे अपॉर्चुनिटी को देख के एस्पिरेंट बता रहा है तेरे भी नाम है जैसे जियो एंड वो ही इज प्लीडिंग आजा रे आजा रे दैट फर्स्ट जॉब इन द कैंपस यूं ही तड़पाना तू मुझे बहुत सारे कैंपस प्लेसमेंट्स में बैठ गए अभी तक कुछ नहीं हुआ आजा रे तो देन अपॉर्चुनिटी इज क्वेश्चनिंग हिम सेइंग टू हिम चाहत है अगर आके मुझसे मिल जा तू If you have the guts, you find an opportunity for yourself, and you find me, you come to me. Yeah, then second, dharti se mila de mujhko. That was the first question and answer session between aspirant and opportunity. Okay, and baad mein fir abhi gawa dono ko saath mein mila ke. It's a happy song. Tu hi re, tere bhi na hai. This is your employer and once again. Okay, so this relationship continues. This is what. i said it has to be connected okay? yes it, it has to, it, it has to be experienced the emotion the feeling has to be extended the moral governance the what the vision mission values those are not the sentences can it be articulated with the words that actually can make you feel mm-hmm. okay? so the, these are the things uh, probably i i would uh, leave it here because i don't want to take away the time uh, to The rest, rest of the piece is for all of us to connect to the dots. I hope I am able to make the point. Yes, yes, Tanka, and uh, you have a lovely voice also. Uh, we, we enjoyed it a lot. So, uh, great, great insights from both of you, and um, a very, very interesting take which we are taking right now. Uh, so, I will move on to the next question. Uh, like uh, Bhavesh, um, we can start with you. Uh, can you suggest methods for uh, companies to create and uphold a uh, compelling narrative that aligns with their culture and values so like what are the methods uh, so maybe some new age companies or, or very large organization who are moving into from their uh, like business domain to a new business or, or or creating teams which are much younger than the current workforce so how can they create a compelling narrative that aligns with their culture and values okay so sab se see again we have spoken in bits and pieces but uh, being cognizant of time let me just sum up some of the thoughts that i have with respect to creating a, a compelling narrative mm-hmm. so one it has to be purpose driven so so what are the values culture beliefs of the organization becomes extremely critically extremely important and laying that out at the outset is important mm-hmm. uh, two is authenticity right we have spoken uh, enough and and shankar also gave us some very very good and unique examples of how authenticity drives behavior in the long run hmm. uh, we would be creating success stories so so instead of using known faces how about using your own internal employees start talking about and we did this jana again uh, in, in one of the uh, times that i remember we were moving from an office to another office we had set up a new corporate office we had two choices one to to maybe hire some uh, model and then have them on our walls right the board however decided that why should we have models to come on our walls how about uh, getting people who are already working in our organizations so all of us had to go through photo shoots for about a week or so and it it mm-hmm. felt a sense of pride when you walk into your office and you see yourself on the wall so so that was something which was very very different very amazing uh, and it worked for a lot of people at jana uh, what's another point is is trying to understand your target audience right it's it's important See, one shoe does not fit all. So, mm-hmm. so your story should also be targeting the segment that you are trying to to reach out to. So, how do you understand uh, the whole perspective around the audience and build a compelling storyline according to that? Uh, the last point that I like to leave uh, all of you with is is our ability to adjust and adapt. Right, a lot of large organizations fail because they they have created a brand strategy. They want to continue with that brand strategy. in spite of knowing that perhaps it's not working well perhaps it's not resonating with the audience that they want to meet so the ability to understand the audience ability to kind of make a swift move and and perhaps recreate your brand purpose also become significantly critical in case of startups mostly mm-hmm. great great and uh, shankar uh, what are your your thoughts on this uh, methods to create an uphold a compelling narrative uh, which aligns with the culture and values Uh, i've been uh, sticking to a thread right from the beginning with my answers okay so okay. i will 
continue to do that one is that uh, you have to uh, be there not just in the uh, minds of the people but in the heart of the people okay okay so trying to uh, try to engage people uh, through hearts and minds mm -hmm. uh, uh, second thing is uh, ultimately uh, can we make people think that they are a part of something bigger mm. that they are going to contribute okay. rather than as a, by by, by uh, instead of looking at themselves as an individual can we extend that feeling that hey you have no uh, joined us and you are a large you, you are a part of a larger uh, contribution that we are going to make in terms of the change that we are going to contribute to this landscape either economically or societally and kind of these are the two things that uh, we have to uh, really look forward to make them feel yes i am working for organization and my services like you see that uh, the municipal people they put the boards your taxes at work hmm. while they do the roads and other things okay that's hmm. a larger uh, uh, picture oh uh, so this is the reason i have to pay my tax this year also so can we can we create such kind of a things to, uh, and and third thing is as i said minds and hearts of the people what you what you uh, actually practice and ex exhibit makes a lot of difference uh, i am going back with one example some 20 years back when the bp industry started we had to hire women at the workplace and uh, night shifts uh, were uncommon and and not as a part uh, apart from fact environment and uh, this new age corporate yet to see uh, women working in the nights okay mm -hmm. so even to organize an interaction for an interview okay we we had to organize a pick and drop okay and also invited the parents to come along with them to see how the place is what kind of security measures we have taken okay mm -hmm. and and uh, how they can feel or uh, be be rest assured that their daughter is in a safe hands when they are working with the organization i hope uh, these things are an extra mile that the hr people have to go mm -hmm. okay when i say uh, rather than looking at uh, the perspective of human resources it's more to do with the relationship or the engagement that we are getting into because retention is not about what you do once the uh, person puts his resignation because that's more like a post mortem doing on a dead body mm -hmm. rather retention starts right from the word go the day he or she attends the interview to that of the onboarding and continuously after 3 months or 6 months you should go back and ask him one question have you found an answer why do you today feel that you made a right, right choice of working with me organization and the employee has to say yes that's that should be the kind of approach uh, and the methods to follow there is no one method it is all about seeing yourself in the mirror through the eyes of the employee trying mm -hmm. to correct because there are shortfalls there are failure stories also listen to those failure stories okay mm -hmm. there is a guy who might not get a laptop in spite of multiple follow ups after 3 months he puts up the paper mm -hmm. it's a it's a weird thing but yes our incapacity to deliver a laptop to an individual in spite of multiple follow ups is something that has led to his resignation these things happen Okay, I've seen it in my twenty years, twenty-two years of journey. So these are small things. So there is no one single methodology. Be alert, be vigilant about all the stories that come across to you, and value the ones which actually change your personality and project it to the world. That's what it is. Okay, sure. great, great having you guys. And uh, we have uh, some question answers questions from our audience. So I will get uh, like with them quickly. So the first question is Acharya Akhilesh. Uh, can you share some effective strategies to leverage storytelling and employer branding for a startup? Uh, anyone can take the question. Let me let me take an attempt. See again with a startup, and I was talking about a large organization versus a startup, right? Large mm -hmm. organizations tend to uh, be a little, and and they have to be a little cognizant of switching over from one storyline to the other because they've created a brand over a point in time. But mm -hmm. if you are a part of the startup strategy, uh, it, it makes it easy for you to. to move shift adjust recreate a brand purpose and so on and so forth so what are some of the things uh, maybe look at creating a content calendar so that you are aware of what you are going to do in in one week two weeks one month two months down the line and completely align to that calendar calendar to to work okay. okay two is uh, the use of consistent messaging see uh, people will remember intel google apple and so on and so forth because they have taken decades to build that brand but if you are a startup it it becomes very very critical for you to ensure that the messaging is consistent 
ensure that the messaging is aligned and regular in in respect to getting to your target audience three i would say uh, maybe if you are trying to hire a, a new set of people from either campuses or lateral from other organizations try and look for opportunities of how can you connect through let's say hackathons or maybe uh, do walk in drives which could be physical walk in drive or virtual walk in drive to try and engage with the audience in a in a dual way not just by posting uh, something but also maybe opening up a chat bot so that uh, the the target audience can reach out to you ask questions get their respective response and so on so forth uh, last i'd say uh, how you create a compelling story becomes very different on your career page so your career page is the page which most of the candidates will will reach out to at the first right so, so maybe creating brochures talking about your key takeaways uh, talking about uh, a pdf that that says how is the day in the life of uh, for, for let's say a, a software engineer who joins the organization so maybe create an infographic view of how the day will look like for somebody who joins them mm -hmm. uh, creating an impactful story on what are some of the 10 reasons for example to join us i i still remember Uh, there was an organization i don't want to name but they started this campaign way back in 2014 which which had 10 reasons to join that particular organization and that kind of created a ripple effect in the whole market segment and everybody wanted to join that organization uh, for for whatever reasons so i think important for you to list out some of the aspects that is clear in your mind use consistent messaging and 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 have a story which is very very authentic that should work Great. So I think uh, Acharya, you have got the answer. Um, let us move on to the next question. Uh, so, from Aditi Mishra, what role can employees play in the storytelling aspect of employee branding? So, uh, Shankar, uh, you want to pick it up? Yeah, we heard about TGF, right? Thank God, it's Friday. Okay. okay. So similarly, I've seen an organization. It started. Thank God, it's Monday. Okay, and uh, the the entire uh, A road 12 kilometers stretch to the west of Hyderabad. Okay, we were bombarded with the uh, posters and uh, life-size uh, holdings. Okay, which uh, which has an employee photograph and he or she is saying why they look forward to uh, coming back to the company on a Monday. Okay, so uh, it it once again uh, goes back well with what Bobby shared us earlier. choose your people uh, the insiders as a brand ambassadors okay so that the authentic feel would be extended <coughs> okay i think uh, people always know the, the the industry very well knows about thank god it's friday mm -hmm. so something that uh, so how watch around observe keenly and uh, take that uh, catchy uh, catchy things that can catch up with the generation and use your ambassadors to uh, do the rest of the things for you. so this is one example Uh, so I think um, Aditi uh, got the answer. So next question I have from Devika uh, Singh: How can we measure the effectiveness of storytelling in our employer branding? Anyone can take the question. Okay, uh, let me let me take an attempt at that. See again, we're living in a world of data, right? And everything that we see, we we want it to get measured. And I I also spoke about the fact that CEOs are very very keen on. Let's say they are spending X dollars on a particular initiative. What is the outcome of that? So it becomes important for the brand managers to start looking at whether the storyline has actually created the ripple effect that we wanted to. So, so we need to look at two aspects. One is the internal uh, effectiveness. Two is the external effectiveness. So for internal, there are employee surveys that you can use. You can start measuring your retention percentages with respect to how has retention uh, improved. after you have brought in a certain campaign with respect to creating your brand proposition uh glassdoor fishbowl reviews are are out there for everybody to view and that is a clear indicator of whether your uh, value proposition is working with the audience or not and that audience is both internal and external your certifications like great places to work great managers all of that again are indicators to let you know whether the internal employees that you have are actually supportive of the vision that you are bringing out now from an external perspective it becomes more easier uh, we use analytics to look at views click through rates interactions forums and what not to measure uh, whether or not the the specific campaign has worked for you okay just to add uh, we are in a world of subscribe like and share 
Okay. Yes. Today, today life is more about subscribe, like, and share. Uh, so uh, let us examine and re-examine all those things to which our employees can subscribe, mm-hmm. that employees would like, and employees who would like to share it with others. So I think uh, Bhavi's summary rests in that: subscribe, like, and share. Okay. And cognitive dissonance is a trap that we all fall. Mm-hmm. And uh, thinking, group thinking, uh, probably this is once again a jargon, a theoretical jargon that we have come across if someone someone was reading about the management books kind of a thing. Okay? Mm-hmm. It is not just about cohesiveness in the thought process, but it is about the collaboration in bringing it to the action. That is not fall trap that, okay, ideas are good, we are all on the same page, but in action together, are we able to bring it, bring it into the action? If there are interactions over there, so let us mm-hmm. look at cognitive dissonance and let us say uh, agree to disagree kind of a thing. Okay, that that's what we need to try. Okay, okay, okay. okay. So uh, yeah, so uh, I think Devika has got uh, her answer. Now we move on to the last question. We are already uh, running out of time, but as the last question, so a few minutes is left. Uh, Kusumita asked, could you suggest ways to integrate storytelling into our existing employer branding strategies? Any any ways to integrate uh, storytelling into our existing employer branding strategies? So, Anybody can take. Yeah. Bhavesh, would you like to go? Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. I mean, this is going to be repetitive, but uh, yes. to sum it up, uh, we've all spoken about various other aspects. So, right. identification, alignment of your key purpose, uh, being authentic. Uh, what's, what's also important is do not oversell. Sometimes I think uh, we make the mistake of overselling. We start feeling that if you do more, it'll resonate more. But you need to find the right balance between underselling and overselling. Right? Every story does not sell. Likewise, everything that sells. May, may or may not have a story. So that's important to know. Two uh, is also to kind of uh, research and find your right channel, right? Sometimes uh, social media can be an overkill. Uh, yeah. It will actually uh, do wonders for some of the brands, but do exactly the opposite for some of them. So trying to find which is the right segment where you need to target your audience becomes extremely critical. So those are my two cents. Uh, Shankar, if you want to add something. Shankar, we can't hear you. Okay, I think there's some issue. I think, yeah, there's a technical issue. Okay. Okay. So uh, uh, we move on to the last phase of it, last phase of our discussion. So we have talked about a lot about recruitment. Uh, I wanted to have, uh, uh, like, you have been experienced in hiring. So, in any uh, techniques or tricks you want to give to people who are job seekers? Uh, so that they can improve their odds of getting selected. Uh, maybe uh, spend a minute or two, uh, like to have like sure. cheap techniques which people can use. See the job seekers. I mean, I would say uh, there are. It's it's a hard time, and and let's be honest with each other, right? That, mm-hmm. that jobs are uh, coming down as far as the market goes. A lot of organizations have put a freeze on their hiring. A lot of organizations are laying off. So it's going to yes. be a tough time, right? But what's very very important for each one of us is to partner with each other, build connections, forge relationships and work towards creating that that uh, that work relationship that will actually take you further. So it's going to be a long journey. Okay. Uh, there are vices. I mean, I, I wouldn't call it a complete vice, but for example, a chat GPT. Right? A chat GPT can help you in thousand ways, but can also uh, make you look very, very less authentic in other thousand ways. So, so how you leverage AI Generative AI tools like BARD or ChatGPT becomes extremely critical. It's it's okay. okay to get inspired from. It's okay to pick up some of the aspects trying to redo your resume, mm-hmm. but always ensure that ten minutes with the recruiting manager, and you will get caught if what you have in your resume is not resonating with who you are as a person. So try and be authentic there as well, and and create a brand again. I mean, like organizations, it's very very critical for each one of us to create our own personal brand. That could start from writing blogs, uh, attending conferences, attending webinars as what you're attending, mm-hmm. contributing to LinkedIn uh, from with value of posts, getting uh, comments done and so on and so forth. So, so net net, don't uh, lose heart if you don't get responses from uh, some of the jobs that you've applied for. It is going to be a long journey, but trust you me, uh, it's going to be an interesting one and all of us are going to be in the right space come let's say next quarter. 
Uh, so, Shankar, when when uh, went off, I I asked uh, the last phase question with to Bhavesh. I would also ask want to ask you. So, we have talked about a lot of recruitments, recruiters, talent subjects. On the other hand, when there are job seekers, and it's a particularly difficult time when like things are not going that well. So, yes. any suggestions or any tips and techniques you want to give to the candidates or the job seekers? Uh, yeah. from your side uh, see uh, majority first thing is uh, don't carry uh, i have come across uh, majority of the people or the candidates ke bahar ja ke after going what they say are yeah, the interview went about for an hour hmm. okay but finally i got rejected hmm. okay or someone say it's had their own 15 minutes he didn't touch base upon many of the aspects of my work life hmm. okay but still i got in okay it doesn't matter how long or short your conversations are okay mm. to be to uh, on a, on a lighter vein of the life uh, life story our conversations with the wives will be always very short okay mm. and uh, but ultimately uh, the decisions would be taken okay mm. so uh, one of the things is uh, i i can just still connect here is uh, bring in my last question who is sarita and how mm. she is connected to insta has webinar okay we hardly uh, running around from morning 8 o'clock to till 9 in the um, for the office and schools catching up okay we don't engage in a right conversation probably that, that is what uh, that is where things go wrong so the job seeker should understand whether the whether the discussion was engaged in a right way and the disc the questions were asked in a right perspective okay mm -hmm. or is the time that have been taken okay hour uh, long doesn't mean it it sometimes it, it the recruiters as as recruitment members we we look at various opportunities to hire this guy we see we we make every effort to see that one hour is making an effort to see whether this guy can be fitted into any of our requirements kind of a thing mm -hmm. it doesn't mean a long duration conversation is is a hit and a short conversation is a failure okay so always think about whether the right questions are asked whether the conversation went in a right way whether you have uh, whether you are you are there to the point kind of a thing so that's how it is and uh, i i leave it here with the role uh, of a wife and husband's conversation and insta hair has given us an opportunity yesterday morning over a cup of tea to discuss about these questions and majority of the thought process that i have contributed here today is because of my wife because she deals with multiple generations so even the corporate people the talent acquisition people or the hr today have to see about this oldies the new generations and also the ai guys who are getting into the um, culture altogether so th this kind of deviations is what uh, has to be kept in mind okay okay so with that we uh, we come to the end of the show and uh, bhavesh and shankar you have been uh, great like uh, you have uh, touched on very very interesting anecdotes very interesting stories which people can follow and and very very practical uh, stuff as well and uh, thank you shankar for the beautiful song okay. and with that i close this uh, show off uh, thank you so much for your time guys thank you thank you sir vijit joshi and thank nice you. to interact with you bhavish see you pleasure is all mine shankar thank you thank you thank you yeah. bye thank you guys